Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu salamu ala rasulillah. Wanted to make a quick note today about the Supreme Court of the United States of America overturning Roe versus Wade. A lot of Muslims will involve themselves in these debates, debating the issues from an Islamic legal perspective. For the most part, the overturning of the Roe versus Wade case really has nothing to do about whether there is a right to an abortion or a right to abortion or not. Largely, it has to do as to how that right was affirmed. In the U.S. Constitution, there are both enumerated, specifically mentioned rights, as well as unenumerated rights, which are understood from the legal history of U.S. and British common law. And the challenge to Roe was essentially that the idea that allowing abortion uh, in any way, shape, or form had not necessarily followed from the history of how uh, dangerous pregnancies, medical emergencies, and unwanted pre pre pregnancies had been dealt with through the Amer the, the Anglo-American common law system. Now, why am I making this video? I'm making this video because inevitably we will find people who will want to say, well, this is an Islamic issue too, or this is something that Muslims should be uh, concerned about, or, um, or will simply regurgitate uh, left-leaning liberal uh, talking points about the right to abortion, or will regurgitate right-leaning right conservative talking points about why abortion is not allowed. And in reality, the whole decision has nothing to do about the right to abortion, but it has to do with the American legal process and how those rights are affirmed. So you will still have states that will provide uh, abortions, and you'll have some that will outlaw abortions, because the idea of the, Islam of the American legal system arises out of the will of the people and the legal precedents that are set by their legislatures and their courts, this is not something that we're necessarily dealing with uh, the absolutes um, and the general objectives of law that we would find in our own legal tradition. That's a very, very important distinction. So as Muslims, we have an overarching theory of maqasid al-sharia, of the objectives of Islamic law, which dictate that we are to uh, protect uh, faith and protect life and protect wealth and protect uh, progeny and the family and protect mental health. And these are essentially broad parameters that we can use to see whether or not a given ruling is in proximity to what is the norm within the Sharia or not. Now, the question then becomes not if our fuqaha, our jurists, have spoken about abortion, because in fact they have. If they've spoken about viability, in fact they have. If they have debated whether a trimester system for determining uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the viability and the life of a, of a fetus uh, is appropriate or not. They have. And there's a lot that's been written about that. The question is, does Islamic law, for those of you who are insisting that abortion is an absolute right or an absolute, not, not, not an absolute right, does Islamic law recognize those positions? And I would say emphatically, no, it does not recognize either of those two positions. It does not look at these issues in terms of absolute rights for human beings to, uh, to, um, to implement in their lives. Um, what Islamic law does recognize is that every human being is a slave of Allah and that every human being has a duty to protect the amana, the trust that they have been given. And that is through uh, their own actions, as well as their actions vis-a-vis -vis dealing with 
other people. Now, when we compare the ideas of maqasid al-sharia, the objectives of Islamic law, to the legal rights and the concepts, the legal concepts that uh, a right to abortion was established with through the decisions like Roe versus Wade or Casey versus Planned Parenthood or the other subsequent cases that are related to those two major cases. A lot of people talk about Roe, they don't talk about Casey. Um, Roe established a trimester system uh, for determining uh, when an abortion could or could not happen. Uh, Casey essentially said, that's not the case, we're gonna look at viability. Um, uh, regardless, and, and there's a lot that's been, been, that's been written about this on, on the legal front, so I would suggest everybody to read legal analysis about these things and not read popular media. Um, unfortunately, popular media is hyperbolic. Um, it states things which are not facts and which do not occur in the law uh, and generally want to push, push, push a, you know, an agenda, whether that agenda be, light, be right or left. So in, in, in my uh, limited reading of, uh, of, of American law um, on this topic, there are essentially uh, four issues that this issue goes back to, or the four, four issues, two rights, two legal concepts, that the concept of abortion rests on. And the first of them is the right to privacy. Uh, the second of them is a right to personal liberty. Um, the third is the idea of there being legally protected persons. And the fourth is the idea of stare decisis, which means to let decided things stand. So where do we stand as Muslims, or where does Islamic law stand conceptually, theoretically, from these four issues? Well, I would say that the right to privacy um, is something that Islamic law recognizes in that we can look at many different concepts within the corpus of Islamic law, both in primary texts as well as in uh, secondary texts and derived you know, legal rulings by scholars for example, um, it is impermissible to go into people's homes without permission or with announcing oneself. We're forbidden from uh, spying on one another. Uh, we are uh, ordered to hide the faults of ourselves as well as others. We are forbidden from exposing the faults of others. We are encouraged to have modesty and shyness. We're forbidden from backbiting and tail carrying and slander. We're forbidding, fit, forbidden from claiming the lives and the wealth of other people. We are, uh, uh, we are um, uh, allowed to lie with the, with the intention of mending relations between two people who are fighting, um, or in the case of spousal, spousal dispute. We are forbidden from telling the secrets of others that have been uh, given to us in trust, um, why, whether privately or in uh, semi-private sittings. We're also encouraged to, uh, to uh, uh, play heedless and, and, and unknowing to the acts of people who are heedless and, and people who do things um, that are wrong inadvertently. And there are many other texts that go into this. If we were to talk about, you know, uh, all of these together give us the idea that there is a right to privacy uh, and that there are actions which are private that people will not then know about and that they should not know about and should not be disclosed to others. The question is, does Islamic law uh, uh, in any way, shape, or form take the idea of a right to privacy and port that to the ability of one human being to terminate the life or the potential for life in themselves or in another. And I think that we would be pretty hard pressed to actually make that correlation. And that is something that, which a lot of people don't realize, is that Roe um, while it was rested on the, the idea of a right to privacy, actually um, ceded the idea of right to privacy being the reason for an abortion right to the, to the decision of Casey, 
which changed the, the logic from it being a right to privacy to a right to personal freedom. And so even though, uh, and this is going back to the idea of Islamic law, um, if we look at those, if we look at the, 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 those overarching ob objectives of Islamic law, the overarching objectives of Islamic law, which have to do with preserving the family, preserving uh, uh, mental health, and preserving life, um, would not give an absolute, unfettered, um, unchallenged right to take life or the pension or the potential for life. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm avoiding going into all the different texts on this uh, subject because I think that we would, uh, this would be very long if we were to do that. So that said, even common law doesn't agree with this idea of un, an unfettered use of the right to privacy for establishing an abortion right. When we go to the next thing, which is the idea of personal freedom, then we find that in personal freedom there are areas in which um, ideas of Islamic law uh, uh, match with uh, uh, ideas of common law and areas where they differ. So for example, the verses that talk about personal property, uh, that talk about the, 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 uh, the, the, the right to uh, ownership, that no one's ownership should be infringed upon um, without their due consideration. Um, the verses that have to do with uh, the mahr being paid and, and, not, and that their husbands are not to take anything um, from uh, their mahr. And um, many of the other uh, 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 texts that essentially have to do with a person's uh, personal freedom to, um, to uh, operate within uh, their own private spaces uh, and, um, and to you know, own, own their own wealth and, uh, and not be in, not, not those rights not be encroached upon are, are, are pretty well known. For example, the Prophet Ali Salam, he said, uh, That if, if people were given according to their claims, they would claim the lives, literally the blood, and the wealth of other people. However, the onus of proof is upon the one who claims it, and a, an oath is obligatory from the one who denies that. So this shows us that the base, uh, uh, the base ruling for everything that we have is that we have a, a right to, uh, to you know, do things on our own and have, have personal freedom in doing so. However, that said, that being said, and again, this is about people who would like to say that Islam inherently supports uh, a, 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 a right to life um, or, a, uh, or a right to choose, um, a, you know, abortion, abortion right or the, the, uh, the absence thereof. Um, that personal, uh, that personal uh, choice or the personal freedom, the idea of there being a personal freedom, personal uh, right to personal liberty is not absolute. Uh, and in, in fact, that's you know that goes into the areas of not taking others' lives uh, and not harming oneself. Do not kill yourselves. Uh, Allah was uh, has been merciful with you. So therefore, the idea that there is an absolute right to personal liberty uh, under Islamic law is also uh, very very incorrect, and it is improper for someone to claim that Islamic law supports such a thing. Um, harming oneself, harming others, and facilitating harm uh, can never uh, be found underneath the rubric of personal liberty, and therefore building an absolute right to uh, abortion based upon that uh, would, would be simply uh, improprietous. Um, the last two concepts uh, and that is the concept of uh, the concept of uh, legally protected persons and the concept of stare decisis or letting the decision stand um, are, are also things that there are similarities to in Islamic law. However, uh, when we look at the idea of there being legally protected persons, one of the reasons or one of the main uh, 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 
rationale for allowing abortion rights through Roe versus Wade was that the fetus is, although it has the potential for life, it is not a legally protected person and therefore the American Constitution only addresses legally protected persons. And this is one of the reasons why there has been a, a, such a great deal of debate um, you know, in American media and, and, uh, and, and in, in the American context about the, you know, when does life start? Um, you know, when, 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 when is, you know, when is insolment? Um, when is it, when, when is their viability? Because they essentially want to solve this issue of, is the fetus a person legally or not? And if the fetus is a person legally, then there's no right to abortion. And if they're not a person legally, then there's no right to abortion. And the problem with Muslims who support this idea is that they are in direct contra, 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 contravention of texts which affirm a sanctity to even the potential of life. And that is found in uh, things uh, such as uh, the, the ahadith of uh, you know, the forbidding of, of, of killing, uh, of any kind of killing and of taking any kind of life, even if it is looked at as less than human. For example, one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu went and was bitten by an ant, and out of anger he went and killed the entire ant pile. And the Prophet ﷺ said, you killed an entire ummah that was remembering Allah. Um, so the idea of, one, of what life is and what has sanctity as life is, uh, is, is, is a little different than what people uh, assume it to be. Now, the, the idea of human life and the potential of human life is even more sacred uh, in that when we, we look at cases that happened during the life of the Prophet wasallam, there, there are actually uh, uh, you know, cases where uh, this... Um, uh, you know, th this issue of the potential of life was, was covered. So, you know, for example, um, we find that uh, during the lifetime of the Prophet, والسلام, there was a man who was married to two women. Uh, one of them was pregnant, and uh, they, uh, they were from a Bedouin tribe. They were out in the, the desert setting up their tents. Uh, one of them got angry at the other, and she took a tent pole and hit her co wife in the stomach with it, um, causing not only um, the wife to die, but for the uh, fetus to be uh, miscarried. So she had a miscarriage, and then um, and then she died. And so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he ruled that the blood wit, meaning the financial compensation for the death of a even if an unintended death, uh, must be paid for that woman who was hit by the pole. Now here's the important point. He also ruled that a slave child, male or female, be freed, meaning be bought and then freed, as a, as a uh, expiation for taking the potential of life that was in that woman's stomach. So as punishment, not only did they have to pay the blood wit, but they also had to free the life of a young child in exchange for the loss of life of a fetus. So even if a person would want to say that a fetus is not a life or it is only the potential of life or it's not a fully uh, fledged human being, the Prophet ﷺ still obligated that that be compensated for, which meant that that life is sacred and had sanctity because it had the potential of becoming a human being. Now, one of the people in the, in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ uh, from those tribes actually retorted and he said, uh, 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 He said, are we supposed to pay the blood wit for someone who has not, neither eaten nor drank um, and uh, has not even uh, cried? Uh, is something like this to be tolerated? And so the Prophet والسلام, uh, looked at him and said, are you going to rhyme to me like the rhyming of uh, of uh, sorcerers? Uh, and and he and then fajal dia. He then reiterated that they must pay the blood wit for the death of the woman as well as the potential life in her uh, in her of her fetus. Now this this is interesting because 
the man was essentially using language to try and change the reality of what had happened. The reality of what had happened was a full-fledged adult died and the potential for life in her fe in, in, of her fetus was extinguished as well. And this did not mean that there was no value to that fetus. Otherwise, there would not have been a uh, recompense for uh, the taking of that life. So that's a very important point for Muslims to remember when they're talking about these things. Um, and because of this, uh, uh, scholars uh, debated uh, the ideas of uh, viability, uh, trimester systems, and all of that in looking at balancing the objectives of Islamic law in dealing with situations where there would be an abortion that was necessary. So if, for example, the as Imam al-Ghazali commented that the the sanctity of life starts from that the time of the of the uh, the fetus in the womb and as it grows older in the womb that sanctity grows larger um, you'll find that some scholars have, have, have you know delved into the idea of viability others have delved into the idea of there simply being a, tri a trimester ensoulment happening happening after 120 days them saying that there was you know uh, um, absolute prohibition after the 120 days except for uh, medical emergencies um, and uh, there being you know a very very sparse minority of scholars saying that if you know anything happened before the 120 days then it would be uh, it would be acceptable as there was no soul um, these are all issues that have been debated um, the point that I'm making here is that the debates that are, are, are surrounding this issue of abortion are really not debates that are things that we as Muslims need to take as religious issues. In fact, it, it's, it's better that we stay out of it. And I know that that comes as a surprise to some, to some of us. But we're dealing with a legal system that doesn't recognize the sanctity of life um, as a uh, as a as a um, as an absolute concept, which is which our faith system deals with the sanctity of life. So, you know, uh, if if we're trying to use uh, uh, the 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 heritage of our faith and its and its legal system to somehow bolster these ideas, um, what we do not agree with, you know, preventing. Uh, abortions in the cases of potential miscarriages, ectopic uh, 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 pregnancies, and other uh, very dangerous things um, that relate to to to, uh, to, to, um, to to dangerous pregnancies and to and to and to those types of things. And we also don't ex allow the absolute that abortion is allowed at any time. So the, we, understanding why these decisions are being made will help us better understand how to present the value of our faith. And our value of our faith is not found by regurgitating the ideas of other people. And in, in, in fact, it's through following the legal process that we have that protects both the sanctity of life at the level of the child, but also takes the, protects the sanctity of life at the level of the mother and how those two are balanced out. And our football have done an amazing job in talking about those things. So you can refer to other articles that talk about that. But as far as the American legal concept goes, and this is to the last issue of stare decisis, and that is letting decided things stand. Everybody says Roe versus Wade was decided. Why are they going back on it now? Well, that's the legal process. And the process is to review the rules that you, that you have and see if they live up to the muster of the process that you set and so in reality, the repeal of Roe versus Wade is not about the denial of an abortion right, because if it was, then they could simply just say there's no such right and it would not be a state's issue. In reality, it's about did the process that was used for bringing that to the Supreme Court actually meet the standards for presenting something to the, street, to the Supreme Court as being in line with their own legal heritage and tradition and principles? Our legal heritage, tradition, and principles are completely different, and therefore we would not reach the same type of absolutes that they would 
uh, that they would reach. Um, and in fact, you know, this concept of stereodecisis uh, does have, you know, we do have a, con a, a, a similar concept called istashab al-hal, which is to take the rulings as they have come. Um, but even that, Islamically, is not absolute. There will always be the review and sometimes invalidation of rulings that were made based on incorrect facts or based on faulty interpretations. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm only putting this out there to give you all some context. Do not get sucked into the battles on the left and the right um, for people that, quite frankly, don't care about you and, quite frankly, um, use these issues as tools for their own uh, political, social, financial predominance uh, and, in reality, are not looking out for your best interests. Um, so understand your own faith and its uh, and, and its principles uh, and its uh, and its deep heritage. Um, understand that that might not match up, and many times doesn't match up to what's happening on the on the other side. We alhamdulillah have much more uh, nuance and uh, and 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 a, and a firmer foundation to be to to base our ideas upon. There's no good in you trying to run after people that, in the end of the day, as we've seen time and time again on the right and the left care absolutely nothing about Muslim life or about life in general. If they did, they'd be a lot more concerned about what happens day to day with children, both in the United States as well as around the world. So those are my thoughts. Assalamu alaikum.